In this video, we're going to do an introduction to the present value of an ordinary annuity. Now, remember that in the previous section, we talked about the future value of an ordinary annuity. Now, let's remind ourselves, what is an annuity? Well, it's a series of equal payments made at equal intervals of time. Uh, an example would be uh, saving for retirement. Usually, when you save for retirement, you don't have a whole bunch of money right at the very beginning, and you just pay it in one lump sum into some account and let that money grow. Usually, what happens happens is that you put a certain amount in at the end of each month, let's say uh, $200 at the end of every month into some account that gets uh, a certain interest rate and then you let that money grow over time. So you're making these equal payments, you know, $200 at equal intervals of time, you know, every month and so that would be considered an annuity. Okay, that's an annuity where you, you accumulate funds. Well, there are also other types of annuities, uh, for example, if you're getting paid from a pension plan after retirement or if you're paying off a home mortgage, right? You pay a certain amount every month uh, to pay off that home mortgage. Uh, those are examples of annuities. Now, an ordinary annuity, remember, is where the payments are made at the end of each time interval instead of at the beginning or the middle. So, for example, you're paying into some retirement account. You put your money in at the end of the month. Okay, also we want the frequency of payments to be the same as the frequency of the compounding of the interest. Okay, to be an ordinary annuity, that has to be true. Now what that means is that if you're putting the money in every month, uh, the interest uh, you want to compound monthly. Okay, you don't want to put money into some account monthly and the interest is compounded weekly or semi-annually because the, the computations just get so much harder if that's the case. So the reason this is called an ordinary annuity and the reason this is, this is nice is because the computations, even though they are still a little bit tedious, they're not nearly as bad as they would be if we didn't have this second requirement down here. Okay, now let's recall the formula for the future value of an ordinary annuity. The future value S of an ordinary annuity used to accumulate funds, like putting money into uh, some retirement account, is given by this formula. Now here S, remember, is the future value. Uh, remember when we were talking about compound interest, I think we used the letter A for the future value. But when we're talking about annuities, we use the, uh, the letter S for future value. R is the payment at the end of each uh, period. So if you put in $200 a month, R would be 200. And I is the interest rate per period. So remember that I is not uh, just the interest rate. If, if, if you had 6% uh, monthly, uh, if, if that was the um, annuity, then I would not be 0.06, it'd be 0.06 divided by 12. Okay, so if, if it's compounding monthly, you're putting money in uh, every month, then it would be 0 0.06 divided by 12, which is 0 0.005. And N is not time, N is the number of uh, payment periods, okay, in the annuity. Okay, so let's do an example. And this first part of the example uh, is just a, a review of what we did in the previous uh, uh, section, but part B will be new, and that will be the important part. It says, suppose that at the end of each year for the next 10 years, $500 is deposited in a savings account uh, that pays 7% interest compounded annually. This is an example of an ordinary annuity. Notice you're putting in $500 every year Okay, so, so you're putting the same amount in every year, once a year, for 10 years. And notice also uh, you're paying it at the end of each year. So it's an ordinary annuity because it's the end of each year and also because it's compounded annually and you're putting it in once a year. So it's compounding once a year and you're putting the money in once a year at the end of each year. So it's an ordinary annuity. Okay, how much money would you have at the end of the 10 years? Now let's suppose you didn't get any interest. How much money would you have? Well, you're putting in $500 a year for 10 years. You would have $5,000. Okay, that's the total amount of money that you put in. So I expect the amount of money that we're going to have at the end of 10 years to be more than $5,000. Okay, because that's if, if you got no interest at all. Okay, so if you plug things in, well, the R is 500 times 1 plus I. Now, I is 0 0.07. It's really 0 0.07 over 1 because it's 7% compounded annually. So compounding once a year, it's 0 0.07 over 1. Uh, N is the number of periods. So you're doing it once a year for 10 years. So N would be uh, 10 minus 1 all over. And again, this is really 0 0.07 uh, over 1. Okay, now if you were to type this into a calculator, you'd have to use parentheses. Uh, be careful with parentheses. By the way, these brackets are just the same as parentheses, so don't get confused with that. So the way you type it in, I think you'd need 
to type it like this. Um, so 10 power minus 1. So this is the, the numerator of the fraction. Okay, all of this right here. Uh, and I'm putting the whole numerator in parentheses. Uh, then divided by 0 0.07. I think if you type that into your calculator, that would give you the correct S. And I did this, and it turned out what I ended up with was 6,908.223981. So, so basically, what this means is that the future value, how much money that's in this account in the future, if you round to the nearest penny, is $6,908.22. And notice that is more than the amount of money that you put in. You put in 5,000, but at the end of the 10 years, this is how much is in the account. So you gain really $1,908.22 in interest. Okay, well, the more important question as far as this module is concerned, this section is concerned, is part B how much money would have to be deposited in one lump sum today, okay, at the same compound interest rate as, as above, in order to produce exactly the same balance at the end of 10 years. So in other words, suppose you want to have the $6,908.22 10 years from now. Well, one way to do that would be to put in $500 uh, at the end of each year for 10 years at this compound interest rate, 7% compounded annually. That's one way to do it. Another way would be to just put a big lump sum in right now. Instead of setting up an annuity, just put in a big lump sum right now and let that grow at this same interest rate uh, until it gets to be this amount at the end of 10 years. Okay, so how much would you have to put in right now? Now, I expect the answer to be less than 5000 Okay, because if you put in 5,000 just at one lump sum right now, it would end up being more than 6908. Uh, okay, so I expect my answer to be less than 5,000. Okay, because I'm not putting in money at the end of each year for 10 years, chopping it up like that. I'm putting in all at once at the beginning. Okay, so how do we figure that out? Well, I have the compound interest formula down here. That's what we're really talking about is compound interest. Now, remember the A was the future value, right? A was the future value. And the P is really the, the principal, okay, principal or the present value. Present value. Okay, and the I and the N mean the same thing as above. So the question is, we know what our future value is, right? We found the future value. It's $6,908.22. We know what that future value is. What is the P? going to be. How much would you have to put in at the beginning okay, so that that money grows to be that amount? Okay, So we're going to uh, use this formula. A is equal to P times 1 plus I to the N. But we know our A. Our A is $6,908.22. Okay, now remember, we had called that S up here. But the S is really the same thing as the A. Okay, they're both talking about future value. Here we're just talking about compound interest. We use A for that formula. S when we're talking about annuities. Okay, so what we're going to do is, is solve this now. So let's plug things in. The I is 0.07, so we have is 1.07 to the 10th. Solve this for P. Okay, now notice P is going to equal 6908.22 divided by 1.07 to the 10th power. And I typed this into a, into a calculator, and what I got was $3,511.79. Okay, this is the present value of that annuity. So basically the annuity where you paid $500 a year for 10 years and got this 7% interest rate, uh, notice that money grew to be $6,908.22. Well, if instead of setting up that annuity like that, what if you had put in all of the money at the very beginning? How much would you have to put in at the beginning to make it grow to be the same amount in the future? And the answer is, $3,511.79. That's the present value. Okay, now notice to find the present value, it was really a two step process. We first of all found the future value, okay, using this formula, and then we found the present value using this formula. Okay, we had to do two steps. Well, in the next video, we're really going to combine those two steps into one step. In a certain sense, we're going to combine those two formulas into one formula. 
uh, do some algebra to combine the two formulas into one formula. Uh, and then we won't have to do it as a two-step process. We can just do it as a one-step process. Okay, so we'll have a present value formula. Okay, but this value, I just wanted to make sure you understand the idea of present value. Okay, it's how much would you need to put in right now so that the money grows to be the same amount as if you had done the annuity. Okay, that would be the present value of the annuity. It grows to be the same amount in the future of that annuity.